Hello students, today we are going to discuss about the topic emetics. What do you mean by emetics? These are the drugs which give rise to forced regurgitation or emesis by which the content of the stomach get expelled through the oral cavity. These are the drugs which gives rise to forced regurgitation. What do you mean by regurgitation? It is the action of bringing swallowed food up again to the mouth or forced emesis. What do you mean by emesis? The action or process of vomiting. Therefore resulting the content of the stomach get expelled through the oral cavity or mouth. Therefore, the resulting the content of the stomach get expelled through the oral cavity or mouth. These are the drugs which give rise to forced regurgitation or emesis. Emetics constitute a valuable part of treatment in poison cases. Poisoning cases. Emetics constitute a valuable part of treatment in poisoning cases. Next is mechanism. Mechanism. Emetics act either by two mechanisms. First one, the local irritation of gastric mucosa. Second one, directly acting on the chemoreceptor trigger zone in the floor of fourth ventricle in medulla that is two mechanisms first one is the local irritation of gastric mucosa example ammonium bicarbonate and epica cuneha second one directly acting on the chemoreceptor trigger zone that is centrally acting emetics and the, the vomiting is primarily constituted considered to be a respiratory function this ultimate result will cause the evacuation of the stomach that is emptying of the content of the stomach that is evacuation of the stomach the emetics are sometimes they added to the cuff preparation in low doses to stimulate the flow of respiratory tract secretion. Emetics are sometimes added to uh, as to cuff preparation in low doses to stimulate the flow of respiratory tract secretions. Emetics are given to the patients for physically expelling the toxic substance and reduce the harmful effect and may be able to save patient lives. Emetics are given to the patient for physically expelling the toxic substance and reduce the harmful effect. That is, patient in conscious state, their emetics are easily used. But in, when a patient in unconscious state, emetics may not be very useful. And it is used as gastric lavage. When patient in unconscious state, emetics may not be very useful. Therefore, gastric lavage may be required. What do you mean gastric lavage? It is a process of cleaning out of the content of the stomach. That is gastric lavage. It is a process of cleaning out the content of the stomach. They are also known as gastric irrigation. Next two examples. Two examples are discussed in this chapter. Antimony potassium tartarate and copper sulfate. Antimony potassium tartarate and copper sulfate. First one, antimony potassium tartarate. They are also known as a tartar emetics tartar emetics their molecular formula c4 h4 k o7 sb that is molecular formula of antimony potassium tartarate molecular weight 333.93 next one it contains 99 to 103 percentage of potassium antimony potassium tartarate next day, preparation it is obtained by mixing five part of antimony trioxide SB2O3 that is antimony trioxide with 6 part of potassium acid tartarate, tartarate in a fine paste. It is obtained by mixing 5 parts of antimony trioxide with 6 part of potassium acid tartarate in a fine paste. Then paste is kept aside for 20, uh, a day or 24 hour. It is then boiled with water for 15 minutes with constant stirring. The liquid is then filtered out. Now the filtered filtrate is left for crystallization. The crystals are collected on a filter. They are dried at a atmospheric temperature. That is antimony potassium tartarate preparation. Next, the reaction. The reaction potassium acid tartrate react with the antimony trioxide Sb2O3. Potassium acid tartrate react with the antimony trioxide Sb2O3. Give antimony potassium tartrate plus water. That is the preparation of antimony potassium tartarate next the properties this is a colorless crystals odorless sweetish test is a colorless crystal odorless sweetish test on exposed to, uh, on exposed to air the crystals effloresces on exposed to air crystal effloresces it is soluble in water but insoluble in alcohol it is soluble in water but insoluble in alcohol Next, identification test. It gives the reactions which are characteristics of potassium and antimony. 
it gives the reaction which are characteristics of potassium and antimony that is identification test next test for purity it has been tested for arsenic lead acidity or alkalinity acidity or alkalinity may be measured by the volume of n by 100 acid or alkali which is required to neutralize a solution of definite concentration to the green color of bromocress or green indicated ph 4.5 then one gram of the substance is taken and it is then into a dissolving 50 ml of water and by under acid or alkalis used should not be more than 20 ml for neutralization that is test for purity next year loss on drying loss on drying should not be more than six percentage Loss on drying should not be more than 6% when it is dried to constant weight at 105 degrees Celsius. Next to uses, it is acting as an emetic because of its written action on gastric mucosa. It is acting as an emetic, uh, 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 also known as tartar emetics. Next, also used to treat schistosmiosis and it is administered by IV injection. What do you mean schistosmiosis? It is infection caused by parasitic flatworm that is schistosomes the infection caused by parasitic flatworm schistosomes uh, to use this it acting as an emetics because of its irritant action on gastric mucosa it is used to treat schistosmiosis it is administered and it is administered by iv injections next is storage it is stored in a airtight containers incompatibility it is incompatible with acid and alkalis, salt or heavy metals, albumin, soap and tannins. Next, copper sulfate. They are also known as cupric sulfate. Molecular formula COSO4.5H2O. Molecular weight 249 It contains not less than 98.5 percentage and not more than or not to or not to one percentage of copper sulfate it contain not less than 98.5 percentage and not more than or not to one or not to one percentage then copper sulfate CSO4.5 H2 next to preparation preparation it is obtained by roasting copper containing sulfate it is obtained by roasting copper containing sulfate or in presence of air or by heating copper in a furnace with the sulfur the mixture of copper sulfate and copper oxide formed in the above process is treated with a dilute sulfuric acid. It is a first preparation. It is obtained by roasting copper containing sulfate or in presence of air or by heating copper in a furnace with a sulfur. The mixture of copper sulfate and a copper oxide is formed in the above process to treat with a dilute sulfuric acid. Resulting the solution is filtered, the concentrated and allowed to crystallize when the crystals of copper sulfate separated out it is the first preparation of copper sulfate second one it is also prepared by treating granulated copper in presence of air with sulfuric acid it is also prepared by treating granulated copper in presence of air with sulfuric acid the oxygen of the air assists the reaction that is reaction is 2 cu plus 2 h2s over sulfuric acid plus oxygen o2 gives copper sulfate plus 2H2O that is the preparation of copper sulfate. Next, the solution is filtered out and evaporated to crystallization. And when crystals of copper sulfate is separated out, that is the preparation of copper sulfate. Copper, the granulated copper treated with the sulfuric acid with in presence of air. 2CO plus 2H2SO4 plus oxygen O2 gives copper sulfate. CSO4 plus 2H2O. Next properties. It is exist in the form of deep blue triclinic crystals of the pentahydrate or as blue crystalline granules or powder. It is ex exist in the form of deep blue or triclinic crystals of the pentahydrate or as blue crystalline granules or powder. 
it effloresces slowly in dry air and the crystals are covered with a white anhydrous salt it is soluble in water very soluble in boiling water slowly soluble in glycerol and almost insoluble in alcohol and the aqua solution has been acidic to litmus the salt has been stable to heat up to 60 degrees celsius however on heating 100 degrees celsius it loses two molecules of water when heat is 140 degrees celsius another molecule of water loses loses another molecule of water at heat at 200 degrees celsius a white anhydrous salts get formed a white anhydrous salt get formed when heat at 200 degrees celsius at a higher temperature it decomposes into sulfur dioxide plus oxygen and black cupric oxide and copper sulfate to CuSO4 when uh, heated at higher temperature above 200 degrees Celsius to get black cupric oxide CuO plus to sulfur dioxide SO2 plus O2 identification test it gives the reaction which are characteristics of copper and sulfate test for purity it has been tested for acidity and clarity of solution arsenic and iron especially for lead and zinc it has been tested for acidity and clarity of solution arsenic iron especially for lead and zinc take 10 ml of 10 normal solution of copper sulfate to this add 1 gram of citric acid and 10 ml of ammonium solution now add potassium cyanide solutions so that blue color disappear due to the formation of colorless complex of copper then the add on drop of sodium sulfate and no opalescence or very slight darkening should be produced in case of zinc it may be detected during the above test by a precipitation or opalescence due to the formation of zinc sulfate test for acidity copper sulfate solution has been acidic to litmus and phenolphthalein copper sulfate solution has been acidic to litmus and phenolphthalein arsenic should not be more than 8 parts per million at 8 ppm arsenic should not be more than 8 parts per million next assay the assay of copper sulfate is very important the assay is done on the basis of oxidation reduction reaction of the iodine or thiosulfate the assay is done on the basis of oxidation reduction reactions of iodine or thiosulfate a solution of copper sulfate is first treated with potassium iodide and acetic acid the cuprous iodide is formed that is cui is formed with iodine and liberated iodine is treated with a point on normal sodium thiosulfate by using starch solution as an indicator the titration is continued until faint blue color persists the titration is continued until faint blue color persists a solution of copper sulfate is first treated with potassium iodide and acetic acid the cuprous iodide is formed with iodine the liberated iodine is titrated with the point on normal sodium thiosulfate by using starch solution as an indicator the titration is continued until faint blue color persists it is a reaction 2 CuSO4 plus 4 potassium iodide gives 2 CuI2 plus potassium sulfate first they get cupric iodide that is 2 CuI2 that is cupric iodide then this cupric iodide liberate iodine and cuprous iodide Cu2I2 plus I2 this liberated iodine is treated with the point on normal sodium thiosulfate next the 2 gram of potassium thionocyanate is, is then added and the titration is continued and the blue color disappears and get a uh, first they get a faint blue color persists then 2 gram of potassium thiocyanate is added titration is continued by using point uh, on normal thio sodium thiosulfate and if the blue color disappears the reaction is i2 plus sodium thiosulfate that is 2 no2 s2o3 gives 
Na2S4O6 plus sodium iodide to NaI. Then Cu2I2 plus iodide with potassium thiocyanate KCNS to give cuprous thiocyanate to CuCNS plus potassium iodide. There were the on normal of 0.1 normals Na3S2O3 sodium point on normal sodium thiosulfate on normal point on normal sodium thiosulfate that is equal to carrying to point to zero two four nine seven gram of copper sulfate cuso four dot five h two that is the assay of copper sulfate assay of copper sulfate is very important the assay is done by basis on the basis of oxidation reduction reaction of iodine and iodine or thiosulfate. Next is storage. It has been protected from air, air and heat and moisture. It has been protected from air, heat and moisture. Therefore, it is stored in an airtight container. Incompatibility. It has been incompatible with alkalis, phosphate, beta naphthol, propylene glycol, and sulfur thiazole. It has been incompatible with alkalis, phosphates, beta naphthol, propylene glycol, and sulfur thiazole. Uses It is find use and emitting in low doses. Find use as emitting emitics in a dose a low doses of 300 mg in 30 ml of water. It is used to be chemical antidote in phosphorus poisoning. It is used to be chemical antidote in phosphorus poisoning. It also find use externally as an astringent and also as a fungicide. It also find use externally as an astringent, also as a fungicide. It is 1.5 percentage solution is used as a fungicide. It is it is an ingredient of Benedict and Phalanx reagent. Benedict and Phalanx reagent. It is fine used as an emetics. It is also used for chemical antidote in uh, phosphorus poisoning. Externally used as acetic and also used as a fungicide. This ingredient Benedict and a phalanx reagent. It is uses of copper sulfate. The copper sulfate is very important compound. The assay and material preparation is very important. Okay, thank you, thank you all.